Yo, what's going on boys? It's Ratonic here and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to set up the newest version of DS4 Windows. It's had a few updates since my last video so I want to make an updated version. Plus some of you guys had a lot of questions that I haven't been able to answer all of them in the comments. So hopefully this video answers some more questions for you. So a few important things I want to say first before we get into showing you guys how to set it up is that if you guys don't watch this entire video you may miss some things and it might not work so just make sure you guys watch the entire video also a lot of times what can happen is you guys either don't have the right bluetooth adapter that can't support that high of like refresh rate or speed also another thing that can happen is that your controller is old the bluetooth sensor isn't working correctly i mean there are so many problems that can happen with this so i just want to let you know that if it doesn't work perfectly and you also troubleshoot it and it still doesn't work then a lot of times that's one of the issues a lot of people also don't even know, but they're also using their motherboard Bluetooth instead of their adapter Bluetooth. So make sure you guys know which is which. But I just want to let you guys know those few things before we went into the video. Hope you guys do enjoy. I hope it helps you out. Now, by this point in time, I'm hoping that you guys know how Bluetooth works. But if not, you guys can go ahead and click down here. Here. And then you want to go ahead and right click on that. Go to settings. And then you want to make sure your controller is turned on. You want to hit add a Bluetooth device. And then you want to select this one. Hold down your PS4 button and your share button at the same time. And then it will pop up. You can hit connect. And then it should connect if I were to turn mine on because I have already have it connected. And there you go. You get a lot of little sound there. So once you've done that, you're going to get kind of a screen similar to this. Now I'm going to make a brand new profile. I'm not even going to... Um, go to my current one right now i'm going to make a brand new one just to show you guys as you guys can see i've made a lot of different profiles because i've been demonstrating this for a minute um i'm just going to name this one video one go ahead and save that and then you want to change it to that one now the first thing you want to do so you can actually use your controller in game like if you're playing fortnite you want to make sure you hit use controls now you can also assign your touchpad to different buttons your swipe controls so if you swipe your touchpad, you can assign each one of these buttons to a button on your keyboard, your mouse, or on your controller if you want to remap a button. It's pretty cool. Now when it comes to these settings, a lot of people were saying they had insane drift. It's really messing with the dead zone. You guys don't want to mess with the dead zone. Um, I have mine, I believe, in game, I believe mine is 6.6. Six. Also, again, these things depend on your controller, so you guys have to mess around with these. I can't really give you a, this is going to work, this won't work. You guys have to test it out for yourself. But for me, I play on 6.6 six in game, and I believe I play on 7.6 in here, and that works perfectly fine. But I would mess with those if you're getting drift, that's going to be the main issue. Another thing is you can also assign your multi-touch buttons here. Right touch, left touch, upper touch, all those to buttons that you want. Another thing, your output curve, I wouldn't change this. I would keep it on linear. Some people were asking me if you put it on, you know, enhanced precision or quadratic or whatever, if it give you exponential movement in game with, you know, linear aim assist or blah, 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 the other way around actually. But no, it doesn't work like that. Your input gets completely changed as soon as you go into the game, so you can't mess with that. I don't mess with the L2 and R2. Um, dead zones or max zone or anti-dead zones i don't mess with anti-dead zones um there is a little thing you can do with anti-dead zones i personally don't like it at all so i'm not even going to show it in this video but you guys can easily look that up and i'm sure it's a tutorial out there about that one special action this is where you set up macros so yeah that's here um controller readings so as you guys can see i have almost three and a half milliseconds of delay which really isn't that good it just went up to four for a second you can also see your drift here so this is a good spot for you guys to check and see if your drift is bad. If this black little square is way, way off, then you know you guys got some issues. You guys gotta fix that. But anyway, you can see my input delay is about 3.5 up to 4. Next thing you want to do is you want to go over to other. You want to make sure your Bluetooth pull rate is at max. And then your emulated controller, you want that on Xbox 360 because Xbox 360 controllers get less input delay than a PS4 controller by default. So you want to emulate the 360 controller. The other reason why you want to do that is because a lot of games actually don't even support the PS4 controller. So you emulate yourself as a 360 controller, so that way the game will recognize it. That's the reason for that one. You want to make sure mouse acceleration is disabled. Enable touchpad toggle, you want that enabled. Enable output data to PS or DS4, you want that enabled. Don't touch anything else. 
One thing you can mess around with is use D1, D1 or D input only, and I don't use it, but you could use it on Fortnite. It kind of makes your sensitivity feel a little slower. I personally don't like it much. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much the only settings that you guys need to do. And as soon as I hit apply, as you can see, my input delay just dropped drastically. Now, I also do have a few other things hooked up through Bluetooth, so that probably isn't like the best indicator. But even 1ms, guys, I'm telling you, at 1ms to 0.5ms, you guys are not going to notice a difference at all, especially on controller. You will not notice a difference. But I'll be showing an insane method super soon, guys. Like, I mean, it is insane. Um, super low input delay. Like, it's it's just nuts. But I wanted to show you guys how to go through DS4 Windows. So, because a lot of people were asking me that question. But, like I said, if you guys want to see that video on how to get really, really low input delay, like, it is insane. But you guys have to be super careful with it. Anyway, if you guys want that video, make sure you guys comment down below. I want that video. Or just drop a like, and I'll understand that you guys want that video. So I'll make sure I make that soon. Hope this video did help you out in some sort of way. If it did, make sure you guys drop a like. And if you have any questions, remember, my Twitch link will be in the description, as well as in the pinned comment. And uh, you guys can always stop by there and ask me questions live, and I'll be happy to answer your questions. Also, don't be afraid to comment down below. I always answer your guys' questions as best as I can down there. And one last thing I wanted to say was that I will link my personal Bluetooth adapter that I use in the description on Amazon so you guys can just go pick it up real quick and it'll be right there so you guys don't get confused on which one that I have. Make sure I go find that for you. Anyway, I hope you guys did enjoy the video. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.